Wildfires strike the United States every year, and when they do, they're a danger to businesses, homes, and lives. Civil and environmental engineers have been working hard to understand exactly how these fires ignite structures, even from up to a mile away. We came to find out what they've learned about these structure ignitions and what we can do about it. So there's two primary ways in which a structure will ignite under a wildland fire. The first is flaming ignition, and the second is due to uh, showers of firebrands. And what is the difference between the two? So flaming ignition is when um, the flames are surrounding the structure and actually cause the structure to ignite by direct radiation from the fire. Okay. The second uh, type of ignition is caused by embers that are lifted by the wildland fire and carried with, by the wind. And so these showers of firebrands can actually rain down on the structure, land on the roof, and they can um, blow into the attic through roof vents, or sometimes they can gather up under the eaves of homes. So there hasn't been a lot of study into this up to this point, has there? So previous research is really focused on preventing fires that are caused by flaming ignition. However, um, you know, studies are more and more showing that a large number of the fires that are caused in structures under wildland fire attack are actually caused by these firebrands. About uh, 10 years ago, the National Institute for Standards and Technology started to uh, research this topic um, very closely, and they've developed a testing method. It's called the NIST firebrand generator. What it does is it produces a shower of firebrands. And so what we can do is we can take a roofing assembly or even an entire home subjected to a firebrand shower, and we can better understand what factors are causing a structure to ignite. And then by knowing how structures ignite, we can develop construction strategies to help reduce the, the threat of firebrand um, ignition. And how far can these firebrands travel? Anywhere up to a mile um, in general. Wow. And in some cases, they've been known to travel even further. Wow. So what are some current fire prevention strategies that are in place? Sure. So the first thing that homeowners can do is to make sure that they're using construction materials that are resistant to fire. They've seen a lot of success in the use of Class A rated roofings um, in areas that are prone to wildland fires. The other thing is related to the installation of screens to prevent firebrands from entering attics and other openings, as well as using construction materials that are you know, resistant to fire. Aside from that, um, homeowners can also use land management strategies to remove brush and overgrowth to um, keep vegetation at least 30 feet away from their home to prevent the fire from uh, moving in close proximity to the home. Firebrands can travel long distances and they strike buildings at random. But prevention strategies, like using the right building material, are available. And experts recommend that when it comes to protecting your home, you take every precaution. Inventory of bridges is either structurally deficient or functionally obsolete, which means that they're very expensive to maintain, and unfortunately, structural failures can occur within those aging infrastructure systems.